because we've got a surprise package against one of the world's best. It's Valladolid at plus 550 at home, hosting Real Madrid at minus 215. There's plus 370 on the draw. Let's have a look at the goal line. So the goal line is under over three. It's a just basically a picker. Minus 110 for the over and minus 110 for the under. The Real Madrid free hit, if you like, at minus one is at minus 135. Real Madrid, wow, you're going to get paid. Listen, they're saying Real Madrid scores twice. But are we expecting Valladolid to score? Pavlos, where do you fancy with this one? Because Valladolid are sitting in the top seven. But Real Madrid, they've now got to hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean, if Valladolid, they've been really, really good at home. Uh, so far in the season, and it's not random. It's not random because last season in the in the Segunda División, they were also uh, really good at home. Uh, they're actually much better at home than they were on the road. They they had the third best um, offense uh, at home in the league and the best home defense in the league. Uh, while on the road, they costed 15. Uh, I'm just throwing these stats out there just to show how great they were at home. Um, in in 21 matches, they considered 15 goals at home. But in uh, 21 matches on the road, they considered twice as many goals. So uh, it goes to show that they really value their home ground. And now, uh, whenever uh, a big name like Real Madrid comes to town, uh, they usually make it really hard for Real Madrid to win. Uh, if you look at um, you know past results, there has only been a couple of uh, Real Madrid wins by more than one goal. Uh, most of their wins came by one goal exactly. Um, like I think it's like three or four of their last uh, five wins uh, came by one goal exactly. So I'm not entirely sure what to expect of Real Madrid um, in this occasion. I personally left this match aside. I want I wanted to see um, you know because whenever a team is in form and um, Valladolid were kind of in form prior prior to the break. Uh, whenever you, you have a big break. Uh, it tends to ruin the form for these uh, sides. And it, and it's also the reverse effect in sides that are struggling, sides that were struggling, and then you get a big break, and then they use that break to resolve their issues, find out what's wrong, and then they perform, perform much better. So I, I left this alone because, I, for me, it has a lot of uh, exclamation marks screaming danger, danger. Uh, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if Valladolid somehow managed to stay in the game, maybe uh, you know not allow themselves to be destroyed. Uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, you guys on this one. Well, yeah, but the numbers are saying Valladolid 1, Real Madrid 2, because we've got Valladolid mm. at minus mm. 170 to score. But if you want uh, Real Madrid to score free, you're going to get paid handsomely at plus 150. The big questions around the whole of the Real Madrid squad, though, Roman, is what about Benzema? He didn't play at one minute in the World Cup. All of a sudden, they then say that he might be OK for the final. Modric played two World Cups with the <laughs> amount of minutes sure. and running that he put in. So, I mean, some of these players... That, okay, something goes deep as we maybe would have expected. So, what type of Real Madrid is going to turn up? Is it a lineup check? I mean, I, th- I, th- I still think it's going to be a very strong side. Of course, there, there might be some rotations to what we'd ex- expect with with what you said about uh, Modric. Of course, Schwameni, who who played in the final, uh, Camavinga also. Um, I mean, these guys may may get more of a rest, but I definitely still think they're going to have a strong squad because, as you mentioned, also Benzema. Uh, was practically recovered for the last uh, game or last few games in the World Cup, but uh, they decided not to count uh, on him. So, I mean, he's going to be ready, you know, to go for uh, Real Madrid. And we know that the team is much, much better when Karim is, is, is on the field because let's not forget that before the break, uh, it was true that uh, Real Madrid did beat Cadiz 2-1 in the last game before the World Cup. But before that, they lost against Rayo 3-2. They drew against Girona 1-1. Uh, and against Sevilla, they, they did win 3-1, but uh, they struggled in that first half where Sevilla were quite dominant. So, I mean, it's a bit of a, a tricky thing to say that Madrid uh, were doing really well towards that moment, uh, that period of the season. So now we have to see if, if that dynamic, as Pablo said, could be changed, if they've been, been capable of, of finding out which, which are the problems. But uh, despite all that, I still think that Real Madrid have plenty of quality to beat Valladolid. I think it won't be a massive score, in my opinion, but definitely I think... They could leave there with a 2-0, 2-1, even a 1-0, I mean, would work for them. So, uh, for me, Madrid have to win this game. I just see both teams in this game scoring. I mean, you could go with the both teams to score and over. That would probably pay you a plan, maybe plus 135. I actually went one step better. I think Real Madrid win the game. But I don't think Valladolid don't score. I think that this is a 1-2, 1-3, uh, and it could get even naughtier. Um Pavlos, you, you, you obviously just think you're going to watch Real Madrid maybe for the next couple of weeks and then just see how they uh, fit back into the groove? 
Yeah, yeah, because as you said, you know, Modric was drenched in that. Uh, he was, he, as you said, he played two World Cups. There is a lot of players who played minutes. They had to travel. Uh, they weren't, uh, you know, implemented. To, they were implemented later uh, in the in the team. So it's really weird um, for this particular um, team and and Barcelona as well, to be honest, uh, for me to predict. So I just uh, I just let this go because Valladolid, as I said, really weird, uh, really hard to beat at home. Um, as I said in the chat as well, uh, at home so far in the season they have two wins, five draws, and zero losses. Scored three goals and conceded one. So yes, they didn't face that much of a you know great opposition, but still they're really tight. So I wouldn't be surprised by any result here and judging by what I've seen in uh, matches between the two sides in recent years, I wouldn't be surprised by an upset. So I'm just leaving it alone. I, li I know you guys have plays on it, but I'm just staying away. Okay, let's have a little look at the uh, official plays. And my, my mindset of this official play, I hope, is a little bit like uh, Roman's, is that Real Madrid are two points behind Barcelona. Barcelona play at home. They cannot drop points, these two, if they have real ambition of actually winning and not just being settling for a Champions League play. So I've got Real Madrid to win and both teams score at plus 185. Uh, Real Madrid and under three and a half at plus 140. If we are to win, 2-1 is the correct score. Remember, that is the way the books have priced this game up. At Valladolid 1, Real Madrid 2.